السلام عليكم Will my sins be forgiven? Can a sinner go to Jannah? What is salvation in Islam? Is there a limit after which God will not forgive my sins? Does God need a human sacrifice to forgive our sins? In this video, we will answer all of these questions using only Quran verses and authentic hadith. When you know them, you will understand why no one will ever enter hellfire unless he intentionally asks for it. Bring your coffee and let's start. Before we begin, we need to imagine what is the mercy of Allah. From this hadith, we understand that God divided mercy into 100 parts. One part is distributed between all of his creation. Imagine every mother who ever loved her child, everyone who felt compassion, everyone who felt love, every jinn, every angel, every animal, every insect. In all the history of the universe, all of that is one part of mercy. The remaining 99 parts are reserved for forgiving our sins and letting us go into paradise. Imagine if on the day of judgment, instead of God deciding your future, whether you will go to paradise or hellfire, your own mother will be deciding that. Will she forgive you or not? Of course she will, right? you will be in paradise guaranteed. But what you need to know is, Allah is much, much, much more forgiving and merciful than your own mother. Hamad ibn Salim once said, if they give me a choice between Allah judging me on the day of judgment, or my mother and father judging me, I will choose Allah, because Allah is much more forgiving. Do you know the water filters that we use to clean our water? The more stages the filter has, the purer the water coming out of it, right? Because Allah is the most merciful, in the same way, He made for us 38 cleansing stages that will remove our sins before we enter paradise while we are 100% pure. 23 of these stages is in dunya. 5 of them is in barzakh and 10 is in the hereafter. Our purpose in this video is to know all the 38. Number 1. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The moment you accept Islam, all of your previous sins are forgiven, while keeping your good deeds that you made before Islam. Congratulations, new Muslims all over the world. Number two, repentance also deletes all sins of the same type. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, God waits all night for the day sinner to repent, and waits all day for the night sinner to repent. How to do repentance? Repentance requires three parts. Stopping the sin altogether, regretting doing it in the past, and deciding not to do it in the future. And congratulations. Not only your previous sins of the same type are forgiven, but also, as a present from God for the hard work for breaking a bad habit, you get good deeds equal to all the deleted sins. Quran chapter 25 verse 70 for those who repent, believe, and do good deeds, they are the ones whose evil deeds Allah will change into good deeds. For Allah is all forgiving and most merciful. Number three. What if I didn't make the decision to stop altogether? Can I just ask forgiveness? Yes. Shaitan said to Allah, I swear I will keep deluding them and tempting them as long as they are alive. And Allah said, and I will keep forgiving them as long as they ask for it. Never stop asking for forgiveness. Number four. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever said, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, 100 times every day, God will forgive all his sins, even if it was as much as the foam of the sea. It translates to, glory and thanks to Allah, exalted him from any imperfection. Of course, that doesn't include major sins and the rights of people. Number five. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Follow the sin with a good deed. The good deed will delete the sin. Make it a habit. Every time you slip, follow it immediately with a bigger good deed. Number six. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, While you're doing your wudu, your ablution, when you wash your face, you wash all the sins you made with your eyes. When you wash your hands, you wash all the sins you made with your hands. Same with legs, same with mouth. The moment you finish your wudu, 
a lot of your sins has been washed away. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, If it's prayer time for you and you did your wudu as perfect as possible, and you humbled yourself in your prayer, and you did your prayers as perfect as possible, God will forgive all your sins as long as you avoid the major sins. Number 8. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Imagine if there is a flowing, clean water next to your house, and you shower in it five times per day. Will you ever be dirty? His friends said, no. Then he said, this is exactly what the five prayers are doing to your sins. Number 9. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, If you avoid the major sins and pray Jum'a, Friday prayers, God will forgive all the sins between this Friday prayer and the previous Friday prayer. As easy as that. Number 10. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever fasts Ramadan for the sake of Allah, seeking his reward, Allah will forgive all his previous sins. Number 11. Whoever does the night prayers in the nights of Ramadan for the sake of Allah, seeking his reward, Allah will forgive all of his previous sins. But what if I can't do the night prayers in all of Ramadan nights? That's a lot. Number 12. Whoever does the night prayers just in Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, for the sake of Allah seeking his reward, Allah will forgive all of his previous sins. How easy is that? Number 13. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Fasting the day of Arafat is an expiation for sins of the preceding year and the next year. Number 14. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Fasting the day of Ashura is an expiation for the sins of the preceding year. Number 15. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Every time you face hardship or a disaster in your life, God deletes from your sins. The same meaning is in this hadith. Every time a believer faces hardship or depression or grief or discomfort or illness or anxiety or even being touched by a small needle, God will delete from his sins. So next time when you're facing a difficulty in your life, your friends will be envious how lucky you are. Number 16. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, When you do Umrah two times, God forgives all the sins that you did between them. Number 17. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever performs Hajj, pilgrimage, and do not have any sexual relationship with his wife in it, or commit any sin, or dispute unjustly, then he returns from Hajj as pure and free from sin as the day in which his mother gave birth to him. Number 18. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, An adulterous woman from the children of Israel was forgiven and granted Jannah just because she found a thirsty dog and she filled some water from the well for it. God will have mercy on you if you have mercy on animals. Number 19. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, If somebody intends to do a good deed and he does not do it, then Allah will write him one good deed. If he intends to do a good deed and actually do it, then Allah will multiply it for him 10 times, 700 times, even more if he wants. Depends on his intention and the situation he was in. If he intends to do a bad deed and he does not do it, then Allah will write one full good deed for him. And if he intends to do a bad deed and he actually do it, then Allah will write one bad deed. How merciful is that? Number 20. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The pen has been lifted from three. A child until he reaches puberty. A sleeper until he is awake. The insane until he regains his sanity. Their sins are not recorded. Number 21. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, If Allah loves one of his servants, and this servant has some sins that he will be punished for in the hereafter, God instead will send him the punishment in dunya because it's much easier in dunya. So when he finally meets Allah, he will meet him with a clean slate. A lot of people think if my life is not going well, that means that Allah hates me. Of course not. It might be exactly the opposite. Number 22. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was asked about the people who will enter Jannah without account. He said, a prophet, a shaheed, a dead child, or an aborted baby. So the question is, what is shaheed? Shaheed is someone who sacrifices his own life 
for his religion, for his country, for his family, for defending himself, for defending his rights, or his wealth. This person doesn't even get to ghusl. Allah said about them in Quran chapter 3 verse 169 Never think that those who have been killed in the cause of Allah are dead. No, rather they are alive with their Lord receiving provision, rejoicing in what Allah has bestowed upon them of his bounty, and they receive good tidings about those who will be martyred after them, who have not yet joined them, that there will be no fear concerning them, nor they will grieve. There is another type of shaheed, by the way, which is a person who died drowning or died when his house fell in an earthquake, for example, or died in a fire, or died from stomach illness, or died in a pandemic, or died in a flood, or a woman died while she was pregnant. Those people get ghusl normally, not like the first type of shaheed. But we expect from Allah great forgiveness for them. Number 23 the pain and hardship you face at the moment of death itself. It removes from your sins too. All of these 23 stages clear your sins while you're still alive. Do you think anyone with his right mind will reach the moment of death with any sins in his balance? Seems impossible, right? I think those 23 are enough for the overwhelming majority of us, inshallah. But if Allah forbids and you still have some sins after that, don't worry. There are more stages of forgiveness after the moment of death. I will say numbers 24, 25, 26 together because they are all in the same hadith. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, When a man dies, no further deeds are recorded for him except for three things. First is sadaqa jariya, ongoing charity. For example, someone who built a hospital. And this hospital is treating people for free and it is still running after his death. As long as it is still running, God is giving him good deeds and deleting from his sins, even after he died. Maybe someone who participated in building a masjid or whatever. Second is knowledge from which benefit continues to be reaped. Knowledge that you left for humanity or help it spread. As long as people are benefiting from it, God is giving you good deeds and deleting from your sins even after you die. And the third is the prayers of a good son for his father. That includes the son making dua for his father or even doing umrah or hajj for him. That also includes the prayer that is done in the funeral. Number 27, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, after every person dies, and his family and friends put him in the grave. He hears their footsteps while they are walking away. Then two angels come to him to question him about his belief. This is a very hard situation, but the good news is this hard situation will remove also part of your sins. I'm sorry, but if you still have sins after that, then we will have to go through the harsh filters. Number 28 the punishment of the grave. And we all know the horrors regarding the description of this punishment. I don't want to go into details here about it. But to sum up, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, your grave will either be a piece of Jannah or a piece of hellfire that extends for a very long time until the day of judgment. And that should be enough to delete the remaining part of anyone's sins. But if you still have more, we will have to go to number 29. The horrors and the hardships of the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment passes on the righteous believer like five minutes, happily getting the great news, celebrating with his loved ones, finding his way to paradise. But on the disbeliever, it is as long as 50,000 years. Think about the number. 50,000 years. Not waiting in an air-conditioned room, no. The sun is over their heads. Oceans exploded into fire. Every building, every mountain, everything, gone. Earthquakes that we can't imagine. Everyone running in fear, looking for somewhere to hide, but there isn't any. Angels dragging one by one to his destination. People hiding their left hands to avoid taking the record with it. 
people crying their eyes out, regretting every second that they wasted without repenting to Allah. Close friends turn into sworn enemies. Everyone is blaming the other for misleading them. A man running away from his beloved wife, his father and mother, his own children. Babies who were killed by their parents are being asked, Why were you killed? What was your sin? All that time, no food, no drink, no sleep, no rest, not even a breath of fresh air. For thousands of years, I'm not talking about hellfire now, I'm just talking about the day of judgment. But don't worry, that is for the disbelievers. It's a horrible day for the disbelievers and an amazing day for the righteous Muslim. But what about who is in the middle? What about a Muslim who is a sinner? A bad Muslim? Will it be in the middle, like a number between 5 happy minutes and 50,000 horrible years? Maybe 5,000 years? Maybe less? Maybe 500 years? Listening to that makes a man wonder, why can't I have patience to keep my prayer now, instead of having patience to wait extra 5,000 years before I enter paradise? Think about it. Anyway, after all that, if you still have sins that are not yet forgiven, don't worry, there are more stages. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, For every Prophet, there is one accepted dua. All the other Prophets before me used theirs, but I decided to not use mine. I will keep it for my nation on the Day of Judgment to ask Allah to forgive every one of my followers who didn't do shirk. That's amazing. Number 31 the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Every Shaheed will intercede for 70 of his family members. Lucky you if you have one Shaheed in your family. Number 32, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The miscarried fetus will drag his mother by the umbilical cord to paradise, if she was patient and sought reward for her loss. Also, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Every time parents lose their kid, God says to the angels, if they don't resent my decision and say Alhamdulillah and say Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Raji'un Thanks God, we belong to God and we're going back to God in the end. If they say that, build for them a house in paradise and call it the house of Hamd, the house of the people who say thank you. Maybe the son that you lost and was the cause of your grief will be the cause of your eternal happiness in the end. Number 33 God said in the Quran, My mercy encompasses everything. I will give it to those who will shun evil, pay the cat, and believe in revelation. Imagine the billions of people who will be forgiven just because of that. Number 34. This is both good news and bad news at the same time, depending on what are you doing with your life. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Do you know who is bankrupt? The real bankrupt of my ummah would be he who would come on the day of resurrection with prayers, fasting and charity, but he will find himself without any good deeds. How? During his life, he wronged a lot of people. He was swearing at someone. He was gossiping at someone. He was hating someone. He was stealing from someone. He was shedding blood. All of these people on the day of judgment will seek revenge. They will take from his good deeds until he has no more good deeds left. And then, if they still have rights, they will give him from their sins. And this person who had a lot of good deeds will end up with zero good deeds and a lot of sins that he didn't even do. Then he will be thrown into hellfire. So, if we look at it from the other side, if you are a person that a lot of people had wronged you in your life, this is good news for you, because you will take from their good deeds for free, like you. Number 35. After all of this forgiveness, some people still have sins. And their sins, turns out, they are equal to their good deeds. These people will be standing in a place called Al-A'rar. They can't enter Jannah, because their good deeds are not more than the sins. They are not thrown into hellfire either they will be waiting for God's decision. And we learn that Allah will forgive them from Quran chapter 7 verse 49. 
enter paradise. There will be no fear for you, nor you will ever grieve. Number 36. If someone missed all of the previous 35 forgiveness stages, I'm talking about the worst of the worst people. This person was purposely sinning all his life. And at the same time, purposely avoiding every forgiveness opportunity that God offered him. The only way this person can clear the rest of the sins that are not forgiven yet, unfortunately, the only way left, hell five. Quran chapter 77 verse 32. Indeed, it throws sparks as huge as a fortress, just a spark. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him and his disciples, one time they heard a loud bang. The Prophet said, do you know what is that? They said, what? He said, this was a rock that was thrown in hellfire 70 years ago, just reached its bottom now, 70 years just to fall. And God said in Quran chapter 50 verse 30, Beware of that day. We will ask hell, are you full yet? And it will respond and say, are there any more? Number 37. I want to say that even for the people in hellfire, there is still hope. Because after all of that is over, the people of paradise are in paradise having fun. The people of hellfire are in hellfire. When it's time, Someday, God in his infinite mercy will say, Get out of hellfire anyone who said La ilaha illallah and had in his heart an atom's weight of goodness. An atom's weight. And this will be the last person who will ever get out of hellfire. Number 38. What if my family are in a high degree in paradise and I am in a low degree? Don't worry. Let's read Quran chapter 52 verse 21. As for those who believe and whose descendants follow them in faith, we will elevate their descendants to their rank. This is why God ordered us to be righteous and to help our family to be righteous too. Quran chapter 66 verse 6 O believers, protect yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel are people and stone overseen by formidable and severe angels who never disobey whatever Allah orders, always doing what they are commanded. I want to end this video with a couple of very important things. Quran chapter 39 verse 53. God is saying, O oh my servants who have exceeded their limits against their souls, who have sinned a lot, do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed the all-forgiving, most merciful. Don't lose hope or worry, except if you're doing shirk, worshipping dead saints or worshipping Ali or worshipping Jesus or worshipping cows. If you're doing that, you can ask them for forgiveness, not Allah. And of course, they can't even help themselves. But if you are worshipping God alone, then I doubt that you will ever even see hellfire. And the last question is for you. Do you think God needs a human sacrifice to forgive our sins? Write me your answers in the comments. I will read all of them one by one. If you think this content is useful, please don't let it stop with you. Help it spread to others by engaging with it with likes, shares, and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia Halo, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check the playlist down there. Thanks and salam alaykum.